odontogenic keratocyst. Odontogenic keratocyst is derived from the remnants of dental lamina. Dental lamina denotes to an embryological strand of epithelium that carries the tooth bud. OKC has a biological behavior which is quite similar to a benign neoplasm due to its aggressive growth and high recurrence rate which is 25 to 60 percent. Now due to its aggressive growth, OKC grows rapidly to involve the cortices of the bone. Because of its similarity with the neoplasm, OKC was named as keratocystic odontogenic tumor. If we talk about its occurrence, so OKC occurs over a wide age range from 1st to 8th decade of life with the peak incidence being during the 2nd and 3rd decade. OKC can be present at any site in both jaws but in two third of the cases it is present in mandible with the most common location being the posterior border and the ramus area. In maxilla, the most common site is the posterior segment and the cuspid lateral incisor area. However, occasionally OKC may occupy all the four quadrants of the jaw. In such cases with multiple OKCs, they might be non-syndromic or might be associated with a syndrome such as navioid basal cell carcinoma. Let's discuss some of the important features of the syndrome which includes multiple OKCs, multiple basal cell carcinomas of the skin, calcification of false cerebri, frontal pausing, palmar and plantar dyskeratosis, bifid ribs, multiple epidermoid cysts of the skin, and hypertellorism. Now about the histopathology of OKC, as you can see in the diagram that the epithelial lining is parakeratinized squamous, and it consists of 6 to 10 cell layer. The epithelium separates the lumen from the capsule. However, there are certain areas of focal separations of the epithelium from the underlying connective tissue capsule. The basal cells facing the connective tissue capsules are columnar to cubital. Corrugated parakeratin is present on the luminal surface of the cyst. One of the most important histopathological feature of OKC is the presence of the daughter cyst within the connective tissue capsule. Probably due to daughter cyst, OKC has the high recurrence rate. Connective tissue if left behind might result in the reoccurrence of OKC due to daughter cyst. OKC's developmental cyst, however, if inflamed, might result in the disruption of the epithelial lining of cyst as shown in the picture. OKC has two histopathological variants, parakeratinized which has a high recurrence rate, orthokeratinized which has a low recurrence rate of less than 5%. In radiograph, OKC appears as a well-defined lesion with either smooth margins or scalloped margins. It might be a unilocular lesion or a multilocular lesion. When it comes to the treatment of OKC, enucleation of the cyst is the best option. Surgical resection of the involved bone might be necessary if cyst is extensive. 28 years old patient presented in maxillofacial department with swelling in the lower jaw. Radiography showed wide lesion with scalloped margins involving the molar region in the ramus area. On aspiration, fluid has a protein content of less than 4 gram. Probably after doing the histopathology, the diagnosis is odontogenic keratocyst.